thank you everybody for, for being patient. Uh, we apologize for all the technical issues. As you guys can see, I've had to take a quick flight to, to the moon to, to fix this uh, live stream lag. <laughs> so hopefully everything is now working better. I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but I do, I do know is I'm having uh, Verizon come in to check my connection. It seems to be it's, it's not really transferring to through every single room in my house. It's, so right now I'm doing this on the moon. <laughs> so if anybody has any issues with either a lag or any, any, any kind of any, any, anything like that, just comment down below. This is going out to YouTube. Sorry, let me just, not that. Yeah, so this is going out to YouTube, Twitter, Periscope, Facebook as well. Crypto family everywhere. Let us know how things are going. We'll be taking comments mainly through the Tokometrics YouTube channel, just because we're doing this on the moon. <laughs> so don't really have all the, uh, the gear with me. With that being said, if you have any questions you would like to submit, for the Tokenmetrics AMA, please just go to menti.com. That's M-E-N-T-I.com. Use the code 6996-04. That's 6996-04. Welcome back. Ibrahim, yes, yes. Welcome back. All good. Yeah, for some reason, we've been having lots of issues with the, with the live streams recently. But don't worry. We're, we're here as usual. Bill, welcome back. Long time no see. Ian, haven't talked to you in a while. It's good to see you. <laughs> likewise, likewise. So, uh, so as we mentioned in this live stream, we'll be covering Compound Governance Token. This token has blown up out of nowhere. It's now top 20 market cap project. I mean, to go from zero to top 20 in less than a week and to go from zero to Coinbase Pro listing is pretty impressive. I mean, we've been dabbling in the altcoins for a while. And I'll be kidding you if I didn't tell you that was a win for anybody who got it. Now, we do have very interesting takes uh, on both the token and how they issued the token. So make sure to tune in uh, to, to cover that. That being said, uh, Bill, how's the market so far? Ian, you know what? There's a lot to talk about, okay? I mean, you got Bitcoin boring everyone to tears and altcoins going nuts. And it must be driving crypto hedge funds nuts because they're sitting with Bitcoin and the action is somewhere else. Very typical in a bull market, by the way. The thing that everyone owns doesn't move. The stuff that no one owns is where the action is. So I got plenty to talk about today. All right, all right. Okay, so once again, Minty code. Go to Minty.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. Code is 699604. We'll be taking questions from there and also questions from uh, the, the comments, all right? I see here, what's up, James? Welcome back. Dragon Ball Crypto in the house. To the moon crypto, I like that handle. Ave, Comp, and Chi, and CHSB doing well. Not sure what the last token is, but thank you for that. We'll go through that. Okay, so Bill, uh, I think let's hop straight into um, Compound, right? So. Okay, hold on, sorry, let me just make sure all this is good to go. Yeah, so Compound token is very, very interesting. So for those who don't know, Compound is a governance token issued by the platform Compound.Finance. And they they launched the governance token. It's now fully decentralized as of this week. And it's gone from zero to a Coinbase Pro listing and to also a top 20 market cap coin to go from having no token to issuing their token and blowing up really pretty much in one week, it's pretty impressive. Now, for those who are our customers, be sure to, 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 to follow the newsletter. We'll be putting out our in-depth report on Compound in terms of the fundamental analysis and also the technology analysis and the uh, review. But for, for, for today's show, we'll have Bill kind of going through and giving us his take from a TA perspective. Go ahead, Bill. Okay. So let's talk Compound. <clears throat> now, uh, sometimes when I do my best work, I give traders scenarios, okay? <clears throat> so for Compound, scenario one is that there's going to be kind of a flash crash to 280, okay? It's going to unwind part of the move from 160 to 360. And I can't draw on this chart, but there's support at 280. Okay, so that's scenario one. And I think 
that makes sense because it's paid to buy the dips in these fast moving altcoins. Okay. Now, scenario two is that it just blows up and goes to a thousand. <laughs> okay. That's crypto for you. <laughs> that, right. That, that's crypto. Um, I, I think with how much this is run up, um, and I think it's scarier for people to buy dips because it's run up. I think that's why you should try to buy a dip if this thing comes to 280. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. All right. Now, let's talk about the June curse in Bitcoin. Okay. So let's talk about what's easy to say, particularly for, you know, if you're cynical about crypto or if you're worried. So we're going to go through it here, but basically you'd say, well, Bitcoin always blows up in June, compounds a bubble, sell everything. It's going to 6,000. Okay. I'm not going to take that attitude, but I do want to show you the June curse in Bitcoin. Okay. So this right here is June of 2014. Okay. Bitcoin goes from like 700 to 200. Very unpleasant. Over here in 2016, Bitcoin goes from 800 to 600. Okay. Even in 2017, okay, Bitcoin went from 3,000 to like 1,800. Okay. So even in the bull years, all right, it's gotten, it's gotten wrecked in June. Okay. And if you can bear with me adjusting the screen here, all right, we see over here, in June of 2018, Bitcoin was at 8,000 and eventually wound up at three. And it definitely dropped from eight to six. Okay. And the top last year at 13K was also June. And then, of course, here we sit and sit and sit and sit. Okay. Now, I'm hoping the June curse in Bitcoin is that it just doesn't move at all. So, you know, I could just tell you to sell everything. I think if you need to hedge your Bitcoin, you want to own it, you buy silver because that looks like it's going to go up a lot. Let me just throw that in there because I've got some good charts on silver. I'm not going to go through them today, but if you're looking to protect Bitcoin, maybe you own silver. I'm thinking the Bitcoin curse is that it just doesn't go anywhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to Ethereum now on a daily chart. Okay. Something has got to change here, right? Or maybe not. I keep saying, well, you know, alts can't go up unless Ethereum goes up. Well, wait a minute. This compound, whatever it is, right? You, I don't care what it does. It's providing market leadership, right? I don't right. care if market leadership comes from the alt space, but clearly it's providing leadership. So I'd like to see Ethereum do something, but you know what? I'm, I'm caring less and less if it does. Okay, so what I want to do now is transition into altcoins and take a, take a look at, you know, what happens when you buy the dip? Okay, what, how have you done and how will you do in the future? Okay, so let, let's go to, you know, the mad money move today, which is um, AVE. Okay, now, as you can see with this chart, Okay, we've been following this for our premium subscribers for a while and on the show. Right in here, there was a dip, okay? The break above this black line was important. Then there was a dip and then it took off, okay? The same was true over here, okay? So altcoins are not acting like altcoins. They're actually, they look like stocks. They have these big up moves these orderly corrections, and then the, the, the move resumes. And you could even see up here in AVE, people going <clears throat> at the head and shoulders target, mm -hmm. right? So I know I'm getting crazy, but, you know, Lend actually went way beyond its head and shoulders target and may head to 2200, okay? But you can see, you know, that buying dips here paid off, and you can also see that the rally went farther than people expected. Okay. So yeah, you got to take some risk, but you know, Ave is telling you that there may be more out there. Okay. Okay. All right. Now I'm, I'm switching back and forth. So just give me a second. Okay. So here's Ren. This is a big internal favorite. 
Yeah. Okay. Also, also a DeFi project as well. Also a DeFi project. Okay. So the gray bar is resistance. Okay. So Ren hits the resistance. Okay. But Ren doesn't seem to fall apart. Okay. It, it's, it's not one of these things like with all coins where it goes up there and then it spikes back down and just goes to zero. It's not like that. So I think the fact that Ren is actually holding together, even if it dips a little more, it's worth it to come in and try to buy the dip, say near 1200. Okay. Because there's been other people down there. Okay. Here's Kyber. Okay. Um, I, I think this is another potentially huge up move. This could be the next Ave, and here's why. <clears throat> what we see here in Kyber is something called the head and shoulders. <clears throat> With a head and shoulders, it's three attempts by bears to push a market down. Okay. And that's right over here by this S that's moving around. So after the third attempt fails, the bulls take charge right? And the upside target, okay, the harder the bulls tried to, the bears, I'm sorry, tried to press it down, the more it can go up. That's how I'd explain it plainly. Okay. So now we have Kyber that has managed to break above this black line. Very interesting, right? And it's moving back and forth, but we think it's worth it to buy a dip here. Because the amount of upside that this has is big. And it leads me to believe that in alts, we may be looking at something where alts move higher kind of one at a time, right? Like first it's compound, then it's Ave, and then Kyber may be next, right? And a lot of people in altcoins have been used to, oh, you know, it kind of goes up and then it's over. It just goes back down again. Well, that's not what's happening. Okay. So... <clears throat> One of the other ones that we were looking at, um, oh no, Ziliqua is the one. Okay, so <clears throat> here's Ziliqua, right? Now, Ziliqua goes down and the dotted lines are support points, right? The dotted lines are areas where you might say, okay, I'll try to buy. And what you know that Ziliqua flushes lower, okay? And today they're having a pretty decent green candle. It bottomed out yesterday, okay? And right here, where my cursor is, it's, I don't know, it's decent, right? So people are trying to buy the dip in Ziliqua, and I'm like, well, why not? You know, if it holds where it's at and doesn't turn around and go back down, it could take out 300 and make a new high. Or who knows? Start acting like any of these other coins. You know, it's crypto. Put a little money in, use a stop, and try it. All right. One of the other things that we were, I was looking at is this is called Swiss Borg. Now, here's the good news about being a technical technical analyst. I don't need to know a lot about the project. Matter of fact, sometimes the less I know, the better. Okay. Just look at the chart. Okay. So this was from one of our most savvy customers. Okay. We have this like premium discussion room, right? Where, you know, I, I, I impart knowledge to people and, and they return the favor. That's why it's cool. All right. So they brought this person brought this coin to my attention. Um, and I was like, well, don't FOMO in because it was like three or four days ago. Uh, wait for the dip. And lo and behold, it's dipped. It dipped to one of the dotted lines. And guess what, folks? It keeps bouncing back. So there's dip buyers down here in this. Okay. Now, I also looked at Matic. Okay. Now, Matic, I think we featured this either on the show or in the newsletter, but Matic has one of these head and shoulders bottoms. And everybody gave up last week on the negative Indian news, except us, mm -hmm. because we like it. It's always in our top 20 on tokenmetrics.com. And lo and behold, Maker popped up. Right. Um, this could be a sleeper. It's not, I don't, I don't think it's DeFi, but I think it is an altcoin that people maybe gave up on. And absolutely. We, right. And we've seen this throughout the DeFi space where people actually did give up and then the stuff just exploded. Okay. So we, we don't think it's just DeFi where this is taking place. I mean, 
Yeah, it's easy to look at compound, say it's a DeFi bubble, sell everything, go home, really short live stream, right? But I think that it's worth it to try coins like this. And perhaps my favorite, why not, is Cosmos. Okay, so I can see Cosmos sitting on one of my colorful lines, like literally sitting on it after it just pushed everybody out. I mean, wow. the, the, the mm. give up trade in compound is epic. I mean, this is these red candles. I mean, this thing's going down every day like it's been pushed out of a truck, right? Listen, if these are projects that are good and everyone is selling compound to buy this, everybody's selling all these other coins to get involved in compound. Yes, compound may be a good buy on a dip, but all these other projects that have just gotten kind of abandoned that are still super high quality, they have major upside. So assuming we're not looking at a Bitcoin crypto June calamity, um, I, think, I think there's trades out there that people can do, right? So I don't want to be long-winded, but the bottom line is this. Um, Bitcoin, you have to keep an eye on. If it doesn't move and that's the curse of June, then the action is in alts, right? And buying a dip, all right, is, is proving to be an okay strategy. So if you missed it, I don't think you have to just quit or FOMO into a 20% up move because you're getting the dips to get in. So that's it. Well said, Bill. Well said. And if, if anybody has any comments or questions, uh, please post them down below. All right, let's check in here with the audience and see how we're doing. Okay, so just give me a second here. What's up, Zach? Welcome. Crypto Irwin, Rastel Slav, how are you? Robert, how are you? Welcome back. King Lewis. All right, all right. Everything seems to be working now. We have people on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all over. Once again, if you have any questions, please go to menti.com to, to post your questions. Um, actually, next question, uh, next comment I want to kind of just chime in here with. So we have a question of the day. Let me let me pull up my screen. Just give me a second. Well, actually, so we have a new segment. Um, okay. All right, so we have a new segment called Crypto Showdown. Pretty much we get two cryptocurrencies and we have them compete head to head. So in today's segment for Crypto Showdown, we have Compound and MakerDAO. So go to menti.com and tell us which cryptocurrency token are you more bullish on? Are you more bullish on Compound, which just launched recently and is now top 20 market cap, or are you more bullish on MakerDAO? So we'll give people a few minutes to go and make the voices heard. Obviously kind of go through and, and chime in. So if we go to DeFiPulse.com, so MakerDAO has basically been the, the Bitcoin version of uh, and DeFi. So in the past, the dominance for DeFi was almost over 50% in MakerDAO. But as of this week, the flipping has occurred. Maker is not king of the hill anymore. Maker now is number two and Compound. Compound is the new big daddy. <laughs> Compound, as you see here, over 40% of assets in all of DeFi, sorry, over 40% of assets, four out of 10 of assets locked up in DeFi. DeFi now has gone from over a billion to 1.5 billion in just, pretty much just a week, all thanks to Compound. And Compound is now the catalyst that could really take the DeFi trend to, the, to a whole different level, right? So if we go here, Maker only has $440 million in assets locked up. Compound has over 600 million. And if we go to coin market cap, Compound is now number 18 in terms of market cap, almost a billion dollars in terms of market cap for Compound. And that happened pretty much overnight. As mentioned, Coinbase Pro is um, mentioned they'll be listing Compound. Uh, if we go to Maker, Maker is 25th in market cap. So I think this is definitely a very, very interesting trend, as you know. We're very bullish on Maker. Uh, if we go on token metrics, Maker has, for the most part, been in our top 20 for value investors. 
based on rankings. So now people are probably wondering, what do we think of Compound? And I mean, long story short, Compound is a good project. But in terms of how good it is, uh, stay tuned. Uh, we, we already have the fundamental score on the platform. So if you're a customer, just go to tokenmetrics.com and we'll, we'll have the fundamental score up there already. And the, tech, the technology score and the code review will be up probably in a few days. The, the rating is, is already finished. We, do, we just have to enter it onto the, the platform. But Compound is definitely the real deal, long story short. Now, is it better than MakerDAO? That remains to be seen. Uh, just go to our site and we'll have the full in-depth review. We also have an in-depth investment report that we plan to send out, uh, I would say by the end of the month, so probably in a week or so. Right now it's finished. We just, just have to go through, just make a few tweaks. But I mean, Compound is, is a good project. Uh, Bill, any other comments before we go back to the crypto showdown? Uh, sure. You want to look at the chart of Maker? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right. Screen share coming up right now. Okay. So let's talk about this. All right. So one of the one of the benefits to having an old school guy like me around is I look at DeFi and I look at these DeFi rankings and it's almost like these DeFi projects, they're like banks. These are the crypto banks in effect, right? right? And it reminds me of like late 80s, early 90s when all the big banks started to get into a whole variety of fancy ventures, right? And it was like four or five big ones at the top, not just one winner. So I'm looking at Maker here. and Yes, Compound is clearly trending up. But I think Maker is about to do this shoulder that I keep talking about, like right here, where everyone just kind of gives up like Matic. And, you know, if you look at what Maker has been able to do in the past, okay, it has been able to go up. I mean, it came from a very high place. Okay. Oh, man. Right, okay. <laughs> so from grace. <laughs> right. It's, it's a fall from grace, but we were talking about this with like Zilliqua, right? A long time mm -hmm. ago, right? We were talking about the give up trade because that's been the play in alts. Find the give up trade. So yeah, people may give up on Matic. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, on Maker. Mm -hmm. Right. But that could be an opportunity because I don't think it's like compounds here and then they're just makers going away. I think that's like absolutist thinking, right? Like, Right. I'm a compound yeah. maximalist. Well, I don't know. Are, are, you, are you a Citibank maximalist and <laughs> Chase and Wells Fargo should go yeah. away? No, no, it's not like that, right? Well so, said. Well said. Uh, so I, I, I think there's opportunity here, you know, and, and I think that speaks to the site. You know, if I can do sort of the shameless plug, is it, you know, our site is helping people sort through which are the coins, like what coins do you want to buy on a dip? Like even the block stack chart has at least stabilized, right? So yeah, that, that's how I would weigh in on the, uh, you know, on one versus the other. Yeah, well said, well said. I mean, going back to, to those points, for anybody out there who's a long-term investor, value investor, as we, as we keep on saying, you want to buy from pessimists and sell to optimists. So putting that into perspective this week, right now, Lots of people are pessimistic on Maker because there's a new shiny token in town called Compound. So as Bill mentioned, now is probably a good time to look into possibly buying the dip because now it's very, very undervalued. And that's the crucial thing because projects, fundamentals haven't really changed. But right now, those projects that are undervalued are very, very cheap. Now, going to Compound, while Compound, yes, is a good project, there's so much hype, there's so much FOMO. Yes, it's crypto. Yes, the hype could keep on going to the moon and beyond. However, I mean, from, from a, a TIA perspective, because we have put it into the, the, the platform on tokenmetrics.com. Actually, let me, let me see if I can pull up the, the TA here. One of the cool things is, looks like our, our platform is already pulling in the TA from some exchanges, even though it's not on trading view yet. So that's one of the perks uh, of having... Uh, our platform. Let me just make sure this is the right token. Yeah, it's the right one. Okay, so let, let me let me do a, a screen share. 
just give me one second. So, um, okay, so uh, do take this with a grain of salt because the score is still being finalized. So this is not the official final score, uh, but in terms of the TA, TA right now is very bearish, uh, but this is mainly because everything is new, right? As you can see here, it's just been pretty much just green candle after green candle after green candle. Um, so everything is pretty new. Um, it is seeing some bearish candlestick patterns, not sure how valid what that is. Uh, it does say the VWAP is bullish, um, but I, I, as, as we have more data, then we'll have more information. But for our customers, if you, if you want to go through and see the final score, which will be finalized in the coming week, just go to tokenmetrics.com and sign up. I mean, I just type in comp and you, you, you'll find everything there. We'll also be emailing out to our customers the in-depth investor report by the end of the month. And yeah, uh, if you don't have account yet, we have a 14 day free trial for Tokenmetrics. Just be sure to, to go through and join at tokenmetrics.com. The free trial is going away eventually, uh, probably in the, in the next month or two. We, we plan to make a change in, in terms of how the platform is used for new, new, new customers or new trials. So with that being said though, let us know what you think. Uh, are you bullish on Compound or Maker? Uh, if we go back now to to Mentimeter. Let's see what the audience has said. So Crypto Showdown, Compound or Maker? Compound wins in first place. Compound, the new shiny DeFi token uh, is, is king of the hill. Maker DAO, uh, very undervalued, uh, but now it has been dethroned as, as the champ of DeFi. As you see here, even DeFi Pulse has replaced this from Maker Dominance to Compound Dominance. So, I mean, very, definitely very interesting times we're in. DeFi has now gone from, because last time DeFi, less than a month ago, DeFi was under a billion on June 5th. And now it's almost going to $2 billion in terms of total value locked up. So, I mean, this is definitely a wild time. At, and during this entire process, Bitcoin has pretty much been stagnant. Bitcoin hasn't really been moving. ETH hasn't been moving, as Bill mentioned. And for those who watched our last live stream, we talked about how alts could really be the way to go uh, in terms of alt season and, and not being affected with what's happening on Bitcoin or what's happening with equities. And that seems to be the case. Any last words on that, Bill? No, I think you said it all. I think our system, you know, when you saw the readings on Compound, you know, our, our system doesn't FOMO. Like I don't FOMO and neither does the artificial intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. So it goes back to this whole idea of, you know, even if it's a small dip, you know, wait for the dip. Yeah, wait for the dip. Don't get wrecked. All right. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. Okay. Let's see how we're doing here with the audience. Okay. Uh, dip bull says real DeFi projects or protocols. I have no idea how you confuse entities like banks, maybe central banks with smart contracts. Banks are the enemies of all mankind. <laughs> well, I mean, Yes, banks have their, their downside, but at the end of the day, all of us here have a bank. I mean, so banks are not completely the enemy. I mean, it, I mean, right now, I would say DeFi is, is planning to innovate in, in areas where banks have failed or where banks have not innovated at all. But I don't think we, we should throw banks completely out the window, right? Let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right. And I think if I can clarify that point, because maybe I wasn't mm -hmm. clear, um, Basically, I'm saying, who are the big lenders in crypto, right? So I'm not like, you know, banks are great, but I'm saying crypto is developing a lending system, interest rates, okay? That, that used to be done by banks. Now it's being done by blockchain. So compound may be a little frothy in the short term, but that doesn't mean that the space is a bubble. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next segment. Um, okay, before we go to the questions. Okay, so next up, we have the Moon Awards again. Let me, let me just, okay. All right, so now we have the next segment, the Moon Awards. So everyone knows we've told our, our token community, the forum, our email list, 
all of the, our crypto family out there. And we've been asking them lots of different questions. And now it's time to present the award for the best cryptocurrency exchange of 2020. Yes, you, the community, have made your voices heard in terms of what cryptocurrency exchanges out there you, you like the most. So the blog post is already up on our blog. Just go to blog.tokometrics.com. And without further ado, drum, drum rolls, please. The best crypto exchange of 2020 chosen by our community is Binance. I mean, I don't think this is really a surprise. This is the biggest crypto exchange in the entire world. They've been at the forefront of innovation. They've, they've basically been going 100 miles an hour and haven't really taken their foot off the, 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 the pedal. I mean, they're, they're king of the hill in terms of top crypto exchanges. Uh, I myself also would probably uh, agree that they're definitely one of the better exchanges out there. Uh, Bill, any comments on Binance winning number one as the best crypto exchange chosen by our community? Uh, you're on mute, Bill. Okay, so uh, I don't know, you know, like crypto exchanges, you know, uh, I don't want to make sure, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings because they're all big players. But <laughs> my guess is since we're an alt audience, wherever you can go to make money in, all, in alts is where our customer base is going. And I think that's Binance, so. Yeah, well said, well said. Okay, uh, and now runner up, number two. Best cryptocurrency exchange as chosen by our audience, Coinbase. For those who know, Coinbase is the largest American crypto exchange out there. Coinbase and number one have been going at it head to head. Binance now has also opened up shop in America with Binance US. Uh, Coinbase is also now going global. They've been expanding. Uh, they're available in over 100 countries now, I believe. Um, but in terms of being a, an American exchange, they, ha they have to follow lots of compliance and regulation, right? So they haven't been going 100 miles an hour like Binance per se. However, when Coinbase moves, it makes moves and the entire industry listens. It's known as probably the best fiat on-ramp in my opinion, in terms of bringing and onboarding people into crypto. Coinbase was my first exchange. When I first got into crypto, I first purchased Bitcoin and Ether, and, and Ether on Coinbase. Uh, I don't really use it much anymore. Uh, now, now I've actually shifted. I, I mainly use Coinbase Pro and Gemini, uh, and then we we'll, we also have Kraken as well. Um, so I think those those three are probably the, the premier exchanges in America. Any comments on Coinbase, Bill? Sure. So, um, you know, hopefully this is not, I'm not jinxing myself by saying this, but when I see that little C on Coinbase, it actually stands for clean, right? Like they've got FDIC insurance on deposits. I just saw yeah, in, let's in, in the blog, right? Mm -hmm. So Coinbase has taken a lot of time to get to where Binance is, but when the American public dis discovers that they can get on a site like Coinbase and start investing versus doing Robinhood and buying stocks of bankrupt companies that are like zero, <laughs> okay, Coinbase is going to be there. So- you know, they've, they've both got, they both got their avenues, right? You know, one's edgy and fast moving and the other one is just patiently waiting for the day. Yeah. And one thing I'll add is Coinbase has now began to explore listing a lot more altcoins. So they're about to catch up to Binance. Binance has really had two, two main advantages. One being based outside the U.S. So not having to deal with U.S. regulation as much as Coinbase has. Uh, and then also being able to list lots of different altcoins as a result of that. But now that Coinbase has pretty much kind of caught up and now, for example, they added Compound before Binance did. So, and I think Coinbase has some of the best deal flow in all of crypto for finding new projects. So I would not be surprised if all the, 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 the good American-based crypto projects end up just choosing to go on Coinbase first, especially one thing, right? Coinbase does not charge to list any tokens, right? Now that's, that's one thing that's pretty much against regulation, I believe here in the US, you can't charge products to list. And we all know Binance uh, has been charging products to list on their exchange. But now if you have the best products in the world and they can go on an exchange like Coinbase and not have to pay a dime, that changes the entire landscape. And I think Binance, it has, has this year in 2020 has been affected by that because they've not really had that many good, idea, that good IEOs. 
because now all the good IELTS, in, in my opinion, all the new products that are pretty good, they've been opting to go into American platforms such as CoinList, for example, with Celo Gold and some others, uh, and, and now Compound going straight to Coinbase. So I think this might be the big industry shift or, where the good projects say, you, you know what, we won't pay anymore to list, especially if we, if we also have DeFi platforms as well. Why pay to list a, a project? So I think this, this is a new trend that's happening. Okay. Third on the list, this is also an exchange uh, I also use. Well, I, or rather, we, we have an account, but we've not actually used it yet. Kraken. Kraken is also an American-based exchange. Um, they've been around for, for a long time. They're, they're well known in the uh, with Bitcoin and crypto OGs. Kraken also is well known for their OTC desk. So that's over-the-counter desk, meaning that if you're a whale, if you want to buy or sell large amounts of crypto, Kraken is one of the premier exchanges for that. So with that being said, if we break down the, the actual results, so Binance, I mean, just completely crushed this 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 race. 70%, so over 77% of our audience chose Binance, 12% chose Coinbase, 5% Kraken, 1% Gemini, 1% Hubi, Qcoin, OKX, IDEX, DYDX. Okay, I mean, that, that was a pretty strong showing by Binance. But the question is, now Coinbase is coming. Will Coinbase catch up to Binance? What do you think? Uh, tell us down in the comments below. Um, any last words on that, Bill, in terms no, of uh, the winners of the Moon Awards? No, I think you covered it. All right. So what do you think? Tell us down in the comments below. Okay. All right. Let's now go to the next segment. Just uh, give me a second here. Okay, so next segment, going to the, to the Tokenmetrics forum and seeing how, how we're doing over there. Let me, let me just share my screen again. Okay, so if you haven't yet joined, be sure to go to forum.tokenmetrics.com to join the Tokenmetrics community and participate. We have a, a very active forum with over 400 members and growing. Uh, go here talk with our team, the community, ask different questions, help others answer by answering and sharing your journey in crypto. So we'd like to go through and see the most recent members. Um, okay, there's some people here I haven't had a chance to give a shout out to, so I'd just like to do that. Okay, here we have Tiger. He says, hello, my name is Levi Baldwin. I've been involved in crypto since 2014. I started mining with ASIC Butterfly Miner, then years later moved on to trading. Now I'm an investor, business owner, and musician. My stage name is Tiger Venom, and you can check out my website. Just add .com to my name for music, art, and videos and merch. I got into crypto because I loved the, I, the idea that I could generate an income from my computer with a little bit of mining equipment. I stayed in this space because I see disruptive technologies, AI, VR, blockchain, DeFi as the future. I've been following EM Story since the spreadsheet on YouTube. He's come a long way. I'm honored to be a part of this growing community of free thinkers. All right, uh, Le Levi, welcome to the forum. Great to have you here. Welcome. All right, let's let's uh, let's go to some forum questions here. I see some members have been chiming in. This, uh, okay, some of these questions pretty much get asked all the time, <laughs> but I just want to sh show some love to the forum members. Okay, so, 100x project within the next three to five years. Are there any projects that were launched in 2018 or 2019, except Matic Network and Blockstack, that Ian and his team strongly supported that year, that appear to be at bargain prices right now and have a 100x potential? Okay, so pretty much what projects are at bargain prices right now that have a 100x potential in the next three to five years? Okay, thank you, Harvey. Harvey is also a token metrics customer. Uh, I mean, so not, not to beat a dead horse, <laughs> but uh, I love Helium. Helium is a project I'm pretty much all in on. Uh, I'm mining. Actually, uh, this week, I just bought a, a second antenna. So the antenna I currently have right now, I was testing it out, but it's not powerful enough because I'm basically out here in the middle of nowhere, uh, probably why I also have uh, poor Wi-Fi. <laughs> but I basically have to get a stronger antenna and and try either having that inside. So I got the antenna and the, mag the magnetic base. If that's not gonna work, then I'll probably just go outside and just put it on the roof. But 
Hayam is a product I love, uh, very, very undervalued. Um, outside of Blackstack and Matic, uh, I mean, most of the other projects, the projects we have on, on token metrics, let me see if I can just pull this up here, because um, we pretty much have covered most of them. Um, so if we go to, I mean, Cosmos. Cosmos is a project, uh, as Bill mentioned earlier in the show, right? Right. In 2020, Cosmos has been pummeled. Uh, one of the co-founders stepped down. So Cosmos has not been getting too much love, uh, even though one of the products that's had a great year this year, Kava, uh, is actually using Cosmos technology, which is pretty interesting, right? So as a, as a result of that, we, we think Cosmos is still undervalued. As Bill mentioned earlier in the show, Maker is also one to watch in the DeFi space, especially now that it's out of the spotlight. We think uh, there'll be a dip and we think there'll be a chance to possibly uh, get in at, at a very undervalued price and basically bargain prices. Now, can that do 100X? Uh, in five years, I mean, almost the entire market could do 100X in five years. But I think those projects I mentioned, Helium, uh, Maker, uh, Cosmos, uh, we, we think that those definitely have potential. Synthetics is definitely one to keep an eye on as well. Uh, Bill, anything to add to that? No, I think you covered it. You know, uh, Kyber, Blockstack. Um, it's just time to buy the dips in these things. Matic, Cosmos. Yeah. I mean, Kava, I, I think is interesting. Zcoin, I like the charts. I mean, I don't know how long those two have been around, but I know those other coins we mentioned <clears throat> were around in 18 and 19. So, you know, th there's just, there's room. There's room to go up, right? And there's a lot of money floating around out there. You know, Fed yeah. printed 2.6 trillion, right? So, you know, when you just throw money around, that money's got to go somewhere. And well, we haven't talked about this, right? Nobody thinks it could wind up in old coins. Well, guess what, folks? You know, as I mean, I know we're preaching to the choir, but, you know, this could spread. Like, you know, some big financial TV news platform picks up, hey, crypto has a lending mechanism. And everyone goes, what? Huh? <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Right. I mean, crypto, as we mentioned before, is economic freedom to everybody, right? Because anybody can go and compound and borrow money. Nobody's checking your, your credit. <laughs> no, nobody's asking you a bunch of questions. And, you know, come as you are. Yeah, kumbaya. <laughs> All right. Uh, but yeah, and if there are any other projects we missed, be sure to uh, comment down below and share with the community. Okay. So speaking of that, Bill, I think that's a, that's a great segue. So You've also been reading the book, The Deficit Myth, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts in terms of how all of this, in a way, changes your perspective with crypto and Bitcoin. All right, great. So I, I'd love to get into it. So I read charts for a living, so I don't like reading entire books, and I read enough <laughs> of this book to get the point. Okay, yeah. so here's what these guys want to do. They think that a government that issues their own currency doesn't really have to balance their budget. So you're a household, you have to balance your budget, but the government doesn't have to because it can just print more money. Okay. But after they tell you that the government deficit doesn't matter, they throw this line in somewhere where they go, well, climate change is important. And oh, by the way, we're going to tax the rich for sport. Tax revenue doesn't matter, but we're going to tax the rich for sport. Okay. So, yes, Jeff Bezos bought a $165 million bachelor pad right before COVID hit. So I'm a, I'm a little jealous. You know, <laughs> I'm not quite there yet. Okay. But I'm not sure why the MMT guys want to hit him for sport. Okay. So on one hand, they want to get money to the people so that people can eat and survive. On the other hand, they want to tax the rich. Okay. So let's assume all that happens. What does the world look like? Okay. And this is where I think crypto comes in. Okay. So let's talk about part one. It's called digital dollar. Okay. So what the central bank will do is you'll have an account with the Fed and it'll be a blockchain, go to a wallet and you'll, you'll get like the digital dollar. And you will be able to use digital dollar to purchase certain goods, right? I mean, you won't be able to buy a Lamborghini or a diamond ring with it, 
Okay. But you might be able to buy food, clothing, you know, lawn chairs, coolers, barbecue, you know, anything that you need to sort of sustain yourself, regardless of whether we're sort of in a normal world or in a not normal world. Okay. To allow you to pay rent and other things with the money that you have. And you, who knows, you may even be able to use it for housing and cars, but they're going to specify what you use digital dollar for. Okay. Now that sounds good. That might create inflation that probably creates inflation. Okay. But what happens when you do that? Okay. So someone's going to say, all right, I, I get it. Like, you know, food and food and blue jeans is on uncle Sam. So I got to look for money. What am I going to do with it? Well, we don't have to tell you that, right? <laughs> okay. Now let's flip over to the rich people. Okay. So let's just say that, you know, I don't know, the government goes with some medieval 70% tax rate above a certain level just for sport. Right. All right. So rich people are going to change how they get paid. Okay. How did rich people get rich in this environment, especially in Silicon Valley? Well, they got bonuses. They work at tech companies. The tech companies gave them stock. And every year they get you know, more stock bonuses and then old stock bonuses they start to vest, which means they can start selling the stock. All right. So that's probably a little bit too technical, but basically what happens is they got a bunch of stock and the stocks just went up and up and up and up. They just exploded, right? Over a period of five years. So if you worked in NVIDIA for 10 years, you know, say you're just a six figure engineer, you wound up a, a possibly a multimillionaire because of what the stock did. Okay. And then you sell that stock and you're paying a long term capital gains tax of what? You know, 14% or whatever it is. All right. So in an MMT world where your income above a certain level is all going to Uncle Sam, then everybody's income or salary will be flat. And perhaps instead of get paid in stock, because who knows what MMT does to stocks, right? You might get paid in Bitcoin or Bitcoin futures, like backed, right? I mean, they, they pay you in a stock account. If they're going to take all your money, you'll figure out how to open a futures account. Just, uh, just, mm -hmm. just a theory. And you can exercise, you can use futures to get physical Bitcoin. Now, when you get your physical Bitcoin, well, you can do one of two things with it. I mean, you can spend it and buy stuff with Bitcoin, okay, or Ethereum or whatever. So you'll have potentially a parallel economy. You'll have the digital dollar economy and you'll have a Bitcoin economy running sort of separately. Because if it creates inflation, digital dollar, the Bitcoin and the Ether is going to help you or whatever the coin is, right? And then, you know, rich people can hold on to that and perhaps watch it appreciate over time. And they can raise capital gains tax rates only so far. The population is aging, right? Old people need to sell stuff to live. They can't just take all the money from old people. So if people are getting Bitcoin and crypto in a world where everyone's taking, you know, rich people out to the woodshed, you know, and, and they're trying to legitimately help poor people live. I think there's definitely a place for crypto, right? Not to mention all those people that are getting digital dollars, right? They're like, you know, I got some digital dollars and I might not be able to exchange it for Bitcoin, but hey, this Bitcoin thing's really interesting, right? Like I go to the store and I buy like clothes and, you know, frozen pizza, but hey, check out, check out what's going on with Bitcoin. So, and I've already got a wallet here for cryptocurrency. So bottom line is this, in order for MMT to work, everybody's got to have an account with the Fed. And in order for the Fed to keep track of what everyone's doing with digital dollar, it's got to be on a blockchain. <laughs> it just has to be, right? So if, if MMT needs blockchain to work, that's got to only help crypto. So I, I'm, I didn't buy into the whole print money, tax the rich, we don't need crypto. I think these MMT guys, if they get in power, um, you know, it's, it's a dream come true for us. Right. 
Well said, well said. A good take on that, Bill. All right. Um, let us know what you think down in the comments below. Okay, so now time to segue straight into the, the AMA. Um, just give us a few seconds as we get this pulled up. Um, actually, I think we had one other one other comment, one other question from the forum. Okay. So, uh, Bill, so this, this is about Algorand. So if you could pull up the chart as I pull this up here. Okay. Okay, so this comes from the Tokenmetrics Forum. Just go to forum.tokenmetrics.com to join to ask your questions prior to the show. So this comes from Srikanth. With the likes of Silvio Micali, will Algorand continue to attract institutional investors? Their pure proof of stake consensus protocol coupled with the verifiable random function, VRF, takes the blockchain trilemma head on solving for scalability, security, and decentralization through a unique set of features that appeals to enterprise and DApp developers alike. It looks like an interesting concept. Below the video is very interesting. Okay, so pretty much he's asking about Algorand. So we did review this back, I think in 2018, when they had their, their ICO or, or private sale and they raised a bunch of money. And pretty much we said it was, back then it was overvalued and we ended up being right. I think the price has dumped more than 90% from when it was bought. Let me just pull it up here on Tokenmetrics. Just give me a second here. Now, with that being said though, I mean, the technology is, is good technology. So yeah, so it's down 90% from, from uh, based on, on our calculations here on Tokenmetrics. It's down 90%, technology is good, fundamentals could, uh, could be better. Right now, te technical analysis on our models uh, are pretty much neutral, uh, but l let's check in with Bill and see from his, his perspective what the charts say. Okay, so this really does a good job of capturing, you know, what I've been saying about some of these altcoins, right? Um, you know, in Algorand, there's been three attempts to push it down. Those are the shoulders marked by the S. And uh, that one big attempt was the head. That's kind of like the give up trade. And, and as you can see from looking at this, you know, people have definitely just completely given up. Wow. Wow. Right. <laughs> right? So when you, when you put this up, right, you say to yourself, okay, <clears throat> somebody at some point thought this was worthwhile. And people have just absolutely given up on this thing. And, you know, one of the themes that we've had is, <clears throat> you know, if the technology is decent, people have given up. And this actually looks to me like, this actually looks to me like there's somebody out there that knows that this head and shoulders pattern is there, right? It looks like, you know, it's trying to kind of break out. Um, you know, it's trying to confirm that the head and shoulders pattern is true. But again, you know, I know we sound like a commercial for our own product and we're not really ashamed to do that, but like from a chart point of view, it really is pain <clears throat> to do your homework, right? So, I mean, if something's down 90% and the chart's decent and alts are rallying, well, you know, duh, let's go. And the tech right. is good. <clears throat> and the right. tech is good, right? Yeah. So, I mean, this is why Ian built the platform. Now, now to kind of add on to that, so... Right now, look, look, based on token metrics, we think it's undervalued based on its market cap, right? Its market cap is 47. Now we rank it as 32. So it's, it's definitely not in the top 20 market, uh, top 20 token metrics ranks right now. However, there's definitely under some, it's definitely undervalued at the moment, right? There's definitely a chance for it to hop 15 spots in terms of market cap, just based on where it is right now. Cause the technology once again is good. Uh, if, let me just check, double check, see how it fares. So from a technology standpoint, we would place it probably in the top 25 based purely on technology. Where it's been lacking has mainly been the, the fundamentals. And I think once the TA changes to, to being very bullish, this will 
bring Algorand to possibly top 25, maybe even top 20 tokenometric strength, uh, meaning that it's, it's, it would definitely be even more undervalued based on where it is today. All right, with that being said, are you bullish or bearish on Algorand? Tell us down below. Were you also an early investor uh, who, who possibly uh, has been holding for a while? Uh, definitely tell us down below in the comments below. Okay, all right. Now, time to go to the Minty meter questions. Okay, we, uh, I think you already shared our views on Swissborg from a, from a TA perspective. Uh, we've not done an in-depth review on it on token metrics just yet. Let me, let me take a look and see if we have it there. Just give me a second. Yeah, so while it's there, we only have the technical analysis. I don't think we have done the, the in-depth fundamentals review. Uh, but as, as I bring that up, if you have any questions or feedback or tokens you would like to submit to, to Tokenmetrics and our team, just go to feedback.tokenmetrics.com. That's feedback.tokenmetrics.com to submit product, uh, either products, tokens, or anything else you'd like, want us to, to, to add to the token metrics or review or look into. This is the central uh, place for us to get feedback from our community. So any feedback you have, go here. You can also view the roadmap in terms of what we're actively working on at the moment, right? So we see here people definitely want to get email alerts and we have indices that are, that are coming. And we also have light mode and dark mode uh, that's, that's coming. Okay, all right. With that being said, uh, let's let me go to the the AMA here. Okay, so somebody wants us to look into V chain. Okay. All right, uh, Bill, could you uh, pull that up? Certainly. Just give me a minute. Yeah. V chain seems to be pretty popular in, in the crypto community. And in terms of ranking. Uh, in terms of market cap ranking, it's it's pretty much been in the top thirty, I believe. Let me take a look. Right now, it's twenty seventh in market cap. Now, fundamentals from our perspective are that they've always been pretty good on V chain. Where it's been lacking has been, uh, I believe, pretty much on the on the technology side. I think. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so fundamentals are good. Okay, so uh, this is sort of your opportunity to get to to watch me think about a chart live because something immediately is not popping up to me. So, you know, to the extent you like TA artwork, maybe I can do some and we'll take a look. Okay, mm -hmm. so on 2019, there was an initial avalanche that stopped right around this gray rectangle, right? And V-Train has tried to go through this point here, here, and now it's back again. Okay. So <clears throat> V-Train has, you know, got to get through this level before everyone can get too excited. Okay. But what have we been talking about? We've been talking about, you know, buying the dips. Because like right here, you know, V chain comes to the level and then it's like, oh, uh, right, straight down. And then it's the same thing here. It hits the level and it basically just goes straight down. Okay. So if you hung out and waited for five days in V chain and see what happens, see if it's any different, right? Maybe V chain, I don't know, it's sort of tough to figure out what trend line to draw, you know? This is literally how it gets done, folks, so don't laugh. Um, you know, like when someone says, well, where should I buy the dip? Maybe it's down here at 80, right? Maybe this is the right trend line to be looking at. A lot of times you don't know what the right trend line to be looking at until the market actually does its thing. So maybe at 80 is where you get in on the dip. Now that said, you know, if, if VeChain takes out this gray bar, and then comes back to it and holds, then get involved. Why? Well, because, you know, VeChain got wrecked, but then it's been making this gigantic base, right? And we've had our saying on the show that, you know, 
the bigger the base, the higher in the space. Okay. So if you can buy the dip, great. If you buy it on a dip after the breakout or you buy the breakout, great. But VeChain has a chance, right? Because it's been sitting here like all these other altcoins for so long that it's built up enough steam and people have given up. So, hey, you know, take a shot. Yeah, take a shot. Shoot your shot, as we say. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you, Bill. All right, let's go on to the to the next question. Okay, uh, this is a uh, this is a pretty interesting one. All right, so the question is, what's our take on Trump banning Bitcoin? Okay, so I have been hearing about this in the news, and then now I think this was in reference not not really banning Bitcoin, but I think somebody is doing a book where they reference comments about what Trump said, I think back in 2018 or 2019, about him wanting to, yeah, I think it was back in 2018, wanting to, uh, uh, or Trump not being bullish on Bitcoin, basically thinking all cryptocurrencies are scams and telling somebody to kind of, I think, make him go down or whatever. I, I'm just paraphrasing. Uh, but I mean, um, I don't think it's, I don't think he can ban Bitcoin. I mean, I think Bitcoin is decentralized. He, he can't really ban it. I mean, they, they could try to regulate it, and make it tough for people involved in Bitcoin or the businesses involved in Bitcoin and crypto, kind of like they've done with with cannabis. Uh, but I don't I don't think they can fully ban Bitcoin. Now, if they, if they even thought about it, I mean, America would get left behind quickly because crypto is the new web. Blockchain is the new web. Blockchain and crypto, this is the biggest innovation since the internet itself. So if they were stupid enough to to ban Bitcoin or crypto, that's like banning the web back in the early 90s. That would basically just guarantee the, their entire economy being left in the Stone Age. And <laughs> anyway, uh, what's your take on that, Bill? Well, I think you can go at it from a couple different levels. Um, I do think Trump was talking Bitcoin down. And I actually, I actually think they have a capability to push it down if they wanted to. I don't know what it is. I just know in 2018, every time there'd be a North Korean... Uh, either you know they would mouth off on the tape or they do a missile test. Bitcoin would go lower because I think you know dictatorships that are hurting from sanctions like North Korea or maybe even the Iranians, you know they're they're mining this stuff. You know they're they're mining. It. So you know if someone goes to the president and said they're using this to get around sanctions or criminals are using it then, you know, he might just off the cuff say, well, we got to do something about that, right? Because they got like a whole State Department and all these huge American institutions trying to pressure these dictators. Now, the second reason why Trump doesn't want it is because he wants everyone in the stock market. I mean, what? Trump doesn't like crypto? I mean, he came from the Atlantic City Casino where the house always wins. I mean, what? We, we can't take a shot in some old coins and do some crypto? Are you kidding? The guy came from casinos. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, it's not that he doesn't like crypto. It's that, you know, really he wants everyone in stocks because stocks are his way to get on Twitter and say, look at what a great job I'm doing. Okay. I mean, that was kind of a pre-COVID thing, but he he's probably sticking to it. I mean, you know, if stocks say the world is not ending, then to many people, perhaps the world is not ending. You know, I mean, so, I mean, the, the guy's been, you know, it's like a football play, right? Or, or a basketball move, right? He's just going to start, he's going to keep running the play or he's going to keep shooting the shot until it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so it's really about how he wants people in stocks rather than banning Bitcoin, right? And, you know, they could say what, what they want about cryptocurrencies. Guess what, people? Guess what? I don't want to get all morbid on you, but- the world's got bigger problems than the occasional scam in crypto. <laughs> okay. If, if that's what you're really, if the president of the United States is worried about that versus what else is going on, we're in big trouble. And well said, well said. Thank you, Bill. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Somebody's saying Trump coin. <laughs> when, when, when Trump coin ICO. <laughs> well, I think that ICO is called the Fed. <laughs> right. 
All right. Um, next question. Hi, Ian. Seen the latest. Have you seen the, the latest news with Helium? Tabs coming soon. Yes, I have. You're right. So for those who don't know, Helium has launched a new product on their blockchain that basically lets you pretty much just add different trackers or devices on anything to track it. Uh, it's kind of like tiles for anybody who's used tiles. It's kind of like if, if you just put it on your laptop or your backpack or whatever, and there's basically an app that shows you where it is on a map. So I, I think it's pretty cool. It's obviously not that uh, that innovative per se. It's, it's already been done. The only difference, different difference is that this is being done on the Helium blockchain, which is pretty cool. Okay, uh, next question. Okay. So what price can Ethereum go to if DeFi is a massive success? Okay. Um, yeah, I, th I think this is pretty interesting. Uh, maybe Bill can also uh, pull up the Ethereum chart. So maybe, I'm not sure if TradingView has any DeFi charts, but looking at this from DeFiPulse.com, if we go to the last one year, actually, let's do all time. So DeFi pretty much began August 2nd, 2017, according to DeFi Pulse. It went from $4 to, if we go to August 2018, to 173 million in assets locked up. And then from there to 2019 to half a billion, basically. And now from 2019 to a year to now, it's about one and a half billion. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's been growing pretty fast. Um, so if we go from 2018, Right, 28 from, from 170 million, let's say let's say one, 150 to half a billion. Yeah, so it's basically done about a, a 3x from there. And now it's also done about a 3x from here. Uh, I'm curious to see to see what Bill says. But I mean, in general, I think DeFi is the next big thing and the next big catalyst that will really show the value for, for Ethereum. So I already have lots of friends of mine who, who were heavy in Bitcoin telling me, hey, Ian, should I move all my Bitcoin to wrapped Bitcoin, WBTC, and just put it on compound? Because I'm missing out on this DeFi lending and interest rates and savings rates and all these things that I, I can't do just with my regular Bitcoin. So I think, I think the herd is coming. I think all the people who are heavy in Bitcoin will see the, the value prop for putting their Bitcoin on Ethereum and being able to just earn more and also just being able to do things in, in, a, in a more decentralized fashion. So very, very bullish on Ethereum. I mentioned before, I think by the, by the year 2030, Ethereum will surpass Bitcoin in market cap. But I mean, if DeFi really blows up, that could happen a lot faster. All right, go ahead, Bill. Okay, so continuing on this uh, theme of sort of watching me work here. Okay, now you've heard us say, it's popular with my colleagues. The bigger the base, the higher in the space, right? That means the longer right. something just sort of sits dead in a band, uh, when it wakes up, it's explosive. And we've seen this across the DeFi universe. Now, in the crypto world, <laughs> the biggest base has been Ethereum. It's sat here since July of 2018, okay? And it's done nothing. It's done absolutely nothing. I mean, okay, yeah, it's moved around, but mm -hmm. we're just sitting in this band, okay? And if you look at these diagonal lines, you know, if it breaks out of 230, it can go to 300. If it breaks above 300, it can start moving 450, 900, right? In other words, when I look at the chart, okay, I can draw, I can draw all kinds of stuff, right? But the bottom line is Ethereum hasn't moved in like two full years, Okay. And the day that Ethereum is viewed as collateral. In other words, why is DeFi blowing up? Like, why is it just, why is it crazy? Right. Well, obviously, because you can get no questions asked credit, and people are also viewing Ether as good collateral. Right. That's implied in DeFi because that's what you get your loan against. Am I, am I right? So if Ether is collateral and has a bigger the, bigger the base, the higher in the space chart picture, you know, I don't care if Compound's a bubble. If Compound's a bubble and that wakes up Ether, 
but you know, it's, it's, it's Apollo 13. It's, it's the Apollo rocket. Right. Right. So, you know, <clears throat> ether can go to 500. That, that's where I think ether should be. Like if compounds top 20 market cap, ether should not be at two, two thirty. period. Right now. I mean, you know, how many times have I said that? I don't know, but there hasn't been a compound the other times I've said it. And the bigger the base, the higher in the space, you know, that, that saying is older than me. So I leave you with that. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Bill. Okay. All right. Let's go on to the, to the next question. Okay, this is more helium questions. <laughs> okay, so I think I've answered enough helium yeah. questions for today's show. Um, but yes, very bullish on he helium, and I think uh, there's definitely a lot, lots of potential. Okay, how are you both doing in general? Hope you're both doing well. Where are you? Oh, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, we're good. I'm here in America. I'm here pretty much uh, in in the DC metro area. Uh, Bill, Bill is also doing pretty well. I uh, want to kind of comment, Bill. How are you doing? Uh, sure, I'm doing okay. Uh, you know, I'm here in Houston, Texas and, um, you know, we've had a lot of interesting things happen here. You know, we had a little, uh, <laughs> you know, we had, uh, you know, we've got the COVID bug. I don't think we ever had that under control. And then they wanted everybody to go on spring break and then everybody protested. So, Hey man, it's the wild, wild West. What more could you ask for? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. All right. Um, okay. Next question. Let me just pull this up. What is the best protocol for crypto payments that has a token, not BitPay? Okay. Um, I'm going to have to think about this one for a bit. Best protocol for crypto payments that has a token. Well, I mean, I'll just say stable coins. If you're paying somebody, you want to make sure that what you pay them is not volatile. <laughs> so I would say DAI, DAI comes to mind. I mean, I, I have friends who, who, who pay each other in DAI or, or they, they, they pay me in DAI. At Tether, Tether is also up there. Tether has the most volume for any stable coin. I'll just say in general, stable coins come to mind because I know in the past, I've had other people, for example, our podcast engineer, were uh, during the the bull run. I was paying him in in, in ether in ETH, but as the price of ether tanked and tanked, what I normally paid him began to become more and more ether. So after some time, I was like, "Man, I'm paying this guy how much in ether? If ether blows up." And goes to like five thousand. I'd be like that guy who bought pizza <laughs> with Bitcoin. So I said, you know what? Let's switch. I'll pay you in fiat. <laughs> so uh, in general, I think any cryptocurrencies or tokens that are volatile, or any cryptocurrencies or tokens that you think will be worth a lot in the future, you don't want to use to pay somebody. Uh, so I think it's pretty much stable coins. Um, your thoughts, Bill? Well. I think if you want to pay somebody in crypto, you know, it, it, it probably is a good way to make a friend eventually and keep a friend. Yeah. Um, I don't think it hurts to make the occasional payment in crypto. And I don't think, and I do respect anybody who says I'll get paid in crypto. I mean, Ethereum has gone to 80, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things I like to think about, particularly with this MMT thesis that I had, or just this theory is it's bold to say, I'll take my compensation in crypto. That's bold, right? So <clears throat> I got a lot of respect for anybody who, who takes their comp in crypto. Uh, and I do believe that, you know, in the short term, I, I think it's more of an investment rather than you buy stuff with. But, you know, like I said, in January, if I said we'd have a worldwide pandemic and complete social disorder, I would have been fired from the show. So you never know. <laughs> I don't think that's the case, Bill. I mean, you, you, <laughs> yeah, it just, it just deleted it from the video. I know, but what I'm saying is to, it's just so crazy. Yeah. It's just, it, it, it moves so fast. See, that's, that's why I, I don't think crypto is as strange as it used to be. 
right? The world is now moving at crypto speed. Seriously. Like you just turn on your TV and it's like, what? Yeah. Just like you pick up your phone, you wake up and you, you, you go to crypto and you're either mooning or you're wrecked or laughing or crying. The whole world's like that now. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Okay. All right. So let's go on to the next question. So actually, next question is asking about favorite DeFi wallet. Um, but let, let me just kind of maybe also combine this with just favorite wallets in general, because this was one of the upcoming topics in the Moon Awards. All right. So the question was, what's our favorite DeFi wallet? But I think a better way to, re to answer this is to share the results from our Moon Awards, right? So we posed you, the community, all of our audience members, and we asked you, what's your favorite cryptocurrency wallet to use? And drum rolls, please. So presenting the Tokenmetrics best crypto wallets of 2020. This is up on our blog, blog.tokenmetrics.com. So the community has made the voices heard. What is the best crypto wallet? And I think this also applies to DeFi in general. So number one is Ledger. Ledger has really been the most popular cryptocurrency wallet out there. I myself have several ledgers as, as somebody who's, uh, who's been hacked. I, I definitely now know how, uh, how crucial having a hardware wallet is. Uh, now, they obviously, there isn't anything as 100% as completely secure security. However, ledgers do add lots of extra elements, right? I mean, they, they definitely aren't perfect, but it's the most popular hardware wallet out there. It's one I, I definitely recommend. Uh, I re recommend if you, have, if you have a ledger to get several of them, and to clone them, to back them up. So that way, if you lose one, you basically have copies elsewhere and they all are basically the, the same. Then second uh, on that list, Trezor. Trezor is also a hardware wallet as well. Um, this one is also pretty popular. Um, this was the original hard, uh, crypto hardware wallet. Uh, this, this came before Ledger, but Ledger has just really uh, just, I think, had better adoption amongst the crypto, crypto community. Uh, especially with the Ledger Nano X and lots of other things. Now, all of these should work with DeFi. So for anybody out there who's in DeFi, you can basically know that you're securely storing your DeFi uh, through a Ledger. Now, any comments on these two, Bill? You know what? <clears throat> There's a saying from a movie, you know, take care of business or the business will take care of you. <laughs> right. That's a good one. <laughs> Take care of your crypto, or you know, somebody with better computer skills than you might give yeah. you give you a hard time. So, yeah. always always protect yourself. Whether it's stop losses, or you know, if you're an investor, you've got hard wallets. You know. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then, third on the list, Trust Wallet. Now, this is a cryptocurrency wallet that's on mobile phones. They were purchased by Binance back in 2018. Uh, definitely worth checking out uh, if, if we pull up the website here. Uh, I do have them as well. Uh, pretty much I use this uh, when, when somebody wants to pay me. For example, last time I used this, somebody wanted, wanted to pay me for dinner and die. So I just use this to, to basically just, so I don't store much money on, on, on this wallet. But it's definitely a nice wallet to use for just just simple transactions amongst friends. Um, it also supports uh, ERC20 tokens as well. Definitely worth uh, keeping an eye on. Uh, and then we, we do have an honorable mention. So we haven't really disclosed this publicly yet, but um, Digifox. So for those who know Nicholas Martin, Datadash, so he has launched a new project called Digifox. And we, we would like to, to disclose to our audience that Token Metrics has uh, invested uh, in Digifox uh, via the, let me pull up the website here. So we are investors in the project. We are backing Datadash and his project. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, platform, right? So, can, sorry, that's not their site. Uh, let me just pull up their site here. Okay, maybe not the site. So I'll just pull up here. This, this is their, their crowdfunding. Uh, platform on WeFunder. So they were already, they've raised over a quarter of a million and Tokenmetrics invested. Um, yeah, uh, 
um, obviously Datadash is well known in, in the crypto space. He is uh, he's the biggest crypto YouTuber out there, right? And, and now he's building a a DeFi slash CFI project. So definitely keep an eye out on that. They can, they let, let you borrow and lend through Compound and some other different DeFi platforms, as well as also through some other uh, centralized platforms like Celsius and such. Uh, we think this is definitely going to be one of the, the the up and coming wallets out there. So going back to your question earlier, in terms of DeFi wallets, definitely keep an eye out on that. Um, then if we go down here, so based on the votes, Ledger got 70% of the votes from the community. 16% went to Trezor, 7% Trust Wallet, then some others, honorable mentions, My Ether Wallet, Electrum, Engine, Exodus, Atomic, and just blo and blockchain. All right. Um, anything we missed there, Bill? No, I think you covered it. All right. So tell us down in the comments below which crypto wallet you, you use, or if there any, any ones we missed. Uh, I myself like Ledger, Trust Wallet, uh, Digifox as well. Uh, I have used Exodus as well in the past, but I don't really use it anymore. Right now, pretty much hardware wallets is, is the way to go. But I'm curious to see uh, which ones our community likes. All right, uh, Bill, how, how are we on time? I'm still with you. I'm good. Still? Okay, all right, good. All right. Okay, hi, Ian and Bill. How are you guys doing? What do you think of energy NRG token? Okay, uh, let's... Let's have Bill uh, pull that up on his end. Um, so, energy for those that don't know, it's a it's a cryptocurrency um, that's I think it's a fork of Pivx or Dash uh, from from our friend Tommy World Power. Uh, disclosure: Actually, uh, I do know Tommy. He's he's uh, he's a friend. He's a, he also helped me. He was very instrumental in helping helping me uh, back in 2018 with the crypto, with the crypto hack I had. Uh, he was kind of part of the people in, in our group was helping track down the, the hackers. Uh, and I've also helped him as well. I uh, helped him with energy and KuCoin uh, back when I was a KuCoin ambassador. So, so I mean, it's actually pretty crazy. I've seen the project grow from not being on, on any exchanges to now being uh, in the top 20, I mean, sorry, top 100, and at one point even top 50 market cap project. So they'll definitely come a long way. All right, uh, go ahead, Bill. Okay, coming right up here. Okay, so very interesting. And uh, let's talk about this. So most of the time, these head and shoulders bottom formations, this black line here slopes downward like this. However, I followed a technical analyst for years who, I mean, this guy's, you know, this guy's like crypto grandpa, or he's like technical analysis grandpa rather, not crypto. He talks about these type of formations where the neckline is upward sloping. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means if this thing starts to go up and actually breaks out, so it would have to double in order to do that, that once they broke through this line, if they did, it, it could seriously go up a lot. Okay. So, you know, when I, when I look at this and I just, I get simple, right. And I say, okay, you know, this area seems like every time they get to it, you know, it either goes below it a little bit and comes back or it goes down and then it comes back. It's been kind of a floor. So it's, it's close to a floor. Okay. So, you know, I don't want to repeat myself, but you know, with all these old coins, right. You know, the idea of taking a chance or uh, I've, I've heard the expression, you know, a bag of alts. Get a bag of alts. <laughs> you know, if, if that's one of them and you like it, do it. Because, I mean, you know, the downside's this much. And with that chart, the, you know, the upside is 2x, 3x. So, I mean, from a, I guess, I guess I should probably use formal terms. You know, the risk reward in some of these things has totally changed. Yeah, you got to take risk. Yeah, you could lose money. But a lot of these things have already been wrecked. 
And they've been sitting here making these bottoms, you know, just making people. Can you, I mean, can you imagine holding these coins and they go up, but then they get smashed again and they try to go up, but then the bears are there. I mean, it just, it's got to drive those people crazy, right? That's why you have to think about the, this whole give up trade that has occurred, right? You know, we can say, oh, look at this chart. People gave up, but yeah, I mean, have you ever, have you ever rage quit a token crypto, you know? Your job, your life, I don't know. You just, mm -hmm. I'm sick of this. So when people get that sick of something in markets, it can create a huge opportunity. And, and we're at that point, the price action in these other alts. I mean, this is not some pie in the sky thing just because we're an altcoin platform. I mean, it's happening. So this coin may go up, it may not. But, you know, if whoever's asking this question likes it, do it. All right. Thank you, Bill. Okay, all right. Going on to the to the next question. All right. So next question: Can you explain yield farming? Okay. All right. So I'll do my best to try to explain my understanding of yield farming. Obviously, I'm no DeFi expert just yet. I, I myself have not done any yield farming, but I've been reading up on it. And I think best way to really just kind of explain it is, is you're basically getting yield from different cryptocurrencies. So basically kind of you're earning interest or, or basically savings. However, you're doing it across several platforms, several DeFi platforms. So for example, best example is if we go to this is, so for example, REN and Synthetics and Curve have basically teamed up to, to, to provide yield farming to, to their customers or users in, on DeFi. And the way this works is, so the public basically, right, provides REN BTC, which is basically uh, SBTC and WBTC, basically Bitcoin on, on DeFi protocols for, for, for each platform. Uh, so you stake the liquidity or the token, and in this instance, on a platform from Synthetix called Minter, and you basically earn CRV rewards. This is a token um, from Curve, which is a DeFi platform that lets you uh, do all of that. So for example, Synthetics and then Synthetics and the Rent team also provide rewards. So basically you have three projects, Synthetics, Rent, and Curve. They give rewards to people who provide liquidity. And then here you also have some other uh, rewards. So best example is if you go to Curve.fee, or curve.fi, and we if we look at different pools available, so for example, here we have the Y pool. Basically, uh, whatever collateral you put up, you basically split it between, you have DAI, USDC, USDT, and TUSD. So basically all these are stable coins, and this is paying out 57% annual interest, right? But this is different from from yield farming through synthetic curve and rent. So basically you're earning in tokens that are being pointed up by these platforms to incentivize, right? As it says here, right? They're launching a new incentivized pool to provide liquidity for tokenized BTC on, the, on Ethereum. So in an effort to get more people to migrate from Bitcoin, kind of as we mentioned earlier, migrate from their Bitcoin onto DeFi. So this is where I think DeFi can really blow up. And that's why I've, I myself have I've had lots of my friends who have lots of Bitcoins say, I mean, I'm just holding Bitcoin uh, in my wallet when I can just transfer it over to REN BTC, SBTC, or WBTC and earn all these other different altcoins just for having it there. It's basically it's basically free money in a way, right? Obviously, there, there's no free lunch. There are some risks involved with things like that, right? Because uh, I believe with, with this, um, the assets are locked, I believe, in a smart contract, um, but everything is decentralized. And as, as we've seen in the past, there have been some hacks uh, in the past or, or glitches with different smart contracts on, on, on DeFi. So de definitely probably also worth looking into platforms, probably like Nexus Mutual, which is decentralized insurance. So which lets you, which protects you from any smart contract hacks. Now, be cautious. They don't protect you from any any issues found later on th that aren't due from, from bad code. So for example, one of the glitches that happened wasn't 
due to a hack. It was just due to somebody taking advantage of the way the contract was programmed. So definitely be cautious of that. So they only protect you from issues that are, that are that, that basically are, are due from hacking. Um, any thoughts or comments on that, Bill, in terms of yield farming? It is something that is relatively new, but has been trending up in the last month or so. Right. So let's talk about these big returns that are being offered, right? So some might say, well, it's a bubble. It's not sustainable. On the other hand, I actually love it because they're incentivized. You're getting paid to take risk in this stuff. You know, crypto used to be, oh, okay, it's gambling. No, they're taking, you're taking risk. And if you take a certain kind of risk, you'll get paid. How much? Well, a lot. Okay. So this is how like fledgling industries work, right? They pay people to take risk. And I think this is evidence that this is going to be a real industry because people are going to start pouring in. I mean, you, you had Bitcoin and you used to have to just sit around and hope when you picked up your phone and it went to the moon. Now it's becoming like an investable asset. It's collateral. I mean, the word collateral doesn't get thrown around much in crypto. But, you know, if government securities are questionable, if you can't sell your house, you, can't, you, you couldn't sell your car before this happened, now forget about it. What's collateral? What can you borrow against that makes any sense? Well, guess what? Ether or wrapped Bitcoin is just as good of an answer. So crypto as collateral, love it. The fact that they're paying people to do it, excellent. The fact that someone's calling Ian and saying, hey, you know, how do I do this? Even better. Yeah. I mean, I think definitely worth anybody out there, definitely look into it, especially if you have lots of Bitcoin or if you have lots of uh, ERC-20 tokens. I mean, De DeFi lending and borrowing is definitely more risky, but I would say DeFi lending in general is something every investor in crypto should definitely have in their portfolio or look into because it's one way to just mitigate risk and, and to also get, get paid for it as, as, as a result. All right. Let us know what you think. Uh, are you currently yield farming? Uh, do you have different tokens you're looking into? Let us, not, let us know down in the comments below. Okay. All right. Uh, this question is about decentralized ICOs or DICOs. Okay. I've not really uh, heard of this, at least not the way he's spelling it. So let's skip that for now. Okay, sorry, let me just find a question we can answer. Um, all right, so here, found one. Okay, please explain what's happening with the SEC chairman and if it's bullish for crypto. All right, uh, good good question. So, so for those who don't know, uh, the SEC chairman, uh, Jay Clayton, has been nominated by Donald Trump to, to basically be the uh, attorney general, or basically he's his step, his stepping down, right? Let me, let me just pull up the, the full article here. So he's stepping down. Now, for those who know, he's not really been so pro-crypto. So that's why lots of people in the crypto world are rejoicing. Uh, thinking that this opens up basically a chance for somebody who's possibly pro crypto to to enter the scene, right? So he's now going to be New York's Southern District Attorney, basically DA. Um, now, to add on to this, we also have Crypto Mom uh, Hester Pierce, who's pro crypto. So her term was renewed. So all in all, I think it's it's definitely good news. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, we're not going to go to the moon just yet, or, and I don't think they're going to just uh, open up the, the kimono for, for everything crypto, <laughs> per se. But, I mean, it, it's definitely a good start. It's, it's definitely trending in the right direction. Your comments on this, Bill? Yes. Um, I love, it, it, it's, it's a really sad story about this kid from Robin Hood, who you may have heard about, who wound up with a $700,000 yes, yeah. loss. I mean, that's really tragic, mm -hmm. okay? But I'm sure that there's more people who got wrecked as well. 
trading bankrupt stocks with government stimulus money. And I'm sorry that that young man passed away, but I'm not sorry that the government created its own massive retail shenanigans, okay? And that the SEC can go investigate them. <laughs> you know, it's like, nah, 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 nah. you know, let them go and investigate the Robin Hoods and all this BS that happened in equities uh, while crypto develops its own lending system. You know, because I, I don't think the SEC is going to have a problem if Ether is a currency, right? Not a security. And then there's lending going on in that currency. I mean, that, that's not SEC. That's foreign exchange. It's currency, interest rates, right? Mm -hmm. So to the extent that these guys can be preoccupied with other bad guys, and while we're developing uh, an ecosystem of legitimacy, that's what I call DeFi. It's the ecosystem of legitimacy. You know, the next SEC guy, well, you know, he can be, you know, he could be pro crypto. He could not be pro crypto, but there's an election in 2020, so we don't know what we're going to get. All right. All right. Well said. Well said, Bill. Okay. Um, next question. Actually, speaking of that, that let me, we can probably skip to the, to the next question because it was actually a question about that, actually, about the election. So let me skip straight to that. All right. So is it more bullish for crypto if Trump or Biden wins? Okay. Um, I mean, from my perspective, is it more bullish? I think, I mean, as I mentioned earlier in the show, Trump likes stocks and the economy. And he's not really been too fond of crypto. I mean, he's basically called crypto a scam. Uh, however, I mean, stocks have been just They've been printing more money and, and pumping. Now, as Bill mentioned earlier in the show, now uh, with MMT, um, they basically want to want to print more money, and, and that money can flow into crypto. Now, I'm quite quite honestly, I don't really know Biden's policies when it comes to uh, the economy. Uh, I mean, I haven't really kept too much tabs on on Uncle Joe, uh, but I mean, it might be better for Biden. I mean, I, I'm not quite sure, uh, Bill. Your, your thoughts in terms of who's better for the for crypto? Yeah, I, I think the answer is Biden, right? And, and here's why. I mean, you, you pretty much said it. One, Trump wants stocks to go up. So if, you know, stocks go down and Bitcoin goes up, you know, that's not the statistical pattern. But in the event Bitcoin somehow embarrasses Trump or the Fed, there's what I call embarrassment risk, right? If crypto moves and embarrasses a Trump-led administration, that is not going to end well for crypto. It's not, okay? You know, with Uncle Joe, uh, I think, you know, Joe just kind of wants to hang out and play golf. I mean, that's kind of what he did <laughs> under Obama. I mean, you know, like that yeah. Joe just doesn't do a whole lot. You know, he's not like Bernie Sanders crusading for any one thing over another, yeah. You know, I think Joe's going to take office. They're going to go down to the left wing think tanks. They're going to pull a couple of like encyclopedias off the shelf, send them to Congress, do some MMT. And, you know, Joe's probably going to want to save the people. Like Trump definitely wanted to save business junk bonds. You know, the morality of that is what it is. I think Joe is going to want to put printed money in the hands of the people. And I think that definitely helps us. Because that either winds up in a Coinbase account or it winds up where the Fed goes, oh, my God, these guys really want this. And they have to create digital dollar. Right. They have to. And, they, and you know, because they may have to, like, save people. Right. There's there's sort of a, another thing going on here that you know, there's like 30 million people that don't have jobs. Right. So I understand that Trump may considered a more pro business president, but, you know, What's pro business? You know, is it saving junk bonds or is it like trying to create a social safety net or help new job creation? So I think the pro crypto answer is Biden also because you may get a lot of younger people. Okay. It's really important to think about this. I saw a tweet that 
calculated the average age of the cabinet, the Senate, and Congress. And most of these guys, like the average age is close to 60. So you got all these millennials, you got all these young mm -hmm. people, and you got all these old guys, guys 10 years older than me running the government. Well, I'm thinking if Joe gets in, party leadership's going to go to Joe and said, hey, you know, we need a whole bunch of young people in, in these positions, not a bunch of old guys. So I think we're more likely to see somebody with some imagination under Joe, whereas under Trump, we pretty much know what we're going to get and crypto can moon as long as stocks moon. I think that's spot on. That's spot on. A great uh, analysis, Bill. Let us know what you think. Do you think uh, Biden or Trump is better for crypto? Tell us down in the comments below. Okay. All right. Um, let me take a different question. Okay. This question is for Bill. So question is about Bitcoin dominance. So maybe you could pull up a chart for that. Okay. That, that, that might take a second. Give me a minute. Okay. No worries. funny that they should mention this though because i've been tracking this okay hey ravi welcome thanks for for joining brian J, jf uh crypto mama <laughs> welcome welcome crypto Nito, welcome. Michael Angelos, talking about DGB. Okay. Yeah, DGB has been having a, a pretty good summer. Okay. So Bitcoin dominance. Okay. So I, I want to say we talked about this, say, in one of our premium calls. All right. So <clears throat> I'm going to allow myself to waffle a little bit here. Because even though I'm watching this closely, I really don't know what the answer is. I don't know if we're cheering for Bitcoin to take off and lead a rally or we're praying that Bitcoin goes down while alts go up. Now, I think it's the latter, okay? I think we're praying that, you know, Bitcoin doesn't do anything and this alt season just continues. Okay. Um, what scares me about this chart is, you know, I'm afraid of this, right? See how this Bitcoin just sat here for a while, waving this blue line around and then see ya. Okay. I I'm sort of afraid that we're repeating that and I'm hoping we're repeating this, right? Where, you know, Bitcoin just took off and took everything with it. All right. So the answer to the question is, I don't know. The good news is I am watching it, right? And I do think that dominance, once it starts moving, is going to provide some very powerful signals, right? Like, hey, are we in for the usual June wrecked? It may be on that chart, right? Or is this all thing going to just continue to spread? Or will Ether wake up? That could show up on the charts, right? Like, how do you know if the next 15% rally in Ether is real or not? Well, you'll know if dominance goes down, okay? So there will be an answer on that chart. It's a good chart to watch, but I don't have an answer for you today. All right. Thank you, Bill. Okay, so somebody's asking, hi, hi Ian and Bill. I want to thank you guys for all your help and guidance. You're welcome. Great having you here. I see Eternity has has a smart contract called Sophia. Is it related to the same Sophia the robot? Uh, no, it is not. Not to my knowledge. Sophia the robot. That is a different cryptocurrency. Let me let me pull that up. Sophia robot crypto. That is first of all. I think that that's just yeah. So that's singularity. Singularity net. Yeah, so that's a different cryptocurrency. But that's so, no, that's not it. But uh, th thank you. Thank you for the kind words. 
Okay. All right. So next question. So next question, should DeFi have privacy? Oh, I mean, I, I think, yes. I mean, I think in crypto, uh, first of all, everybody should have access to privacy and privacy is coming. There are lots of other privacy-based protocols that are coming to Ethereum or, or are even launching their own protocols that are trying to compete with Ethereum. I know, for example, Enigma uh, has switched over to Secret. Um, let me see if I can pull it up here. It's called the Secret Foundation, I believe. I'm just trying to find their domain name. So, okay, sorry, it's called Secret Network. And they're launching nodes and everything. And that is actually being built off of, it's being built off of um, Cosmos, Cosmos, I'm sorry. I was drawing a blank there. So for those who don't know, Enigma initially was building privacy-based smart contracts on Ethereum. So basically take smart contracts and make them completely private, meaning that nobody knows what's happening. Because right now everything's publicly transparent on the blockchain in terms of smart contracts. You can go and audit the smart contracts and see what people are doing. Well, obviously not everybody wants to have all their financial business publicly uh, out there like that. Uh, so then they pivoted from d building purely based on smart contracts to building an entire private privacy-based blockchain. So this is called Secret Network. Um, this is on, a, on our list of projects to look into, but we've not done a full in-depth review on it yet. And I don't, I don't think it's on tokenmetrics just yet, but definitely worth keeping an eye on, right? Here it says, Secret Network is a privacy-first blockchain-based protocol that allows decentralized applications, all that crypto stuff. So definitely worth keeping an eye on. Um, going back to the question, should DeFi have smart contract, have privacy? Uh, I know a friend of mine sent me some protocol that was doing just that. Uh, I forget what the name was, but it was a privacy-based, it was, it was kind of like ZK Snarks, I believe, for privacy. Uh, then I, I know uh, JP Morgan was also doing some stuff with privacy-based privacy, with pr privacy -based, uh, protocols. But I, I think it's definitely coming. I, I think it's definitely the next uh, goal that people would like to achieve with DeFi because not everybody wants to have everything transparently out there. Uh, Bill? Okay, well, two things. Yes, I understand that, you know, if you effectively get a loan against your ether that you don't want the whole world to know about it. I guess I understand that. But when you start using the P word as in privacy, you're going to get the attention of regulators, right? Period. So while I understand, like, if you want to have some money in like Monero, right? So the whole world doesn't know that you have that particular amount of money in Monero. It's kind of like you're, you know, kind of like you're, you're, you're having money in a safe, a safe place where no one can get at it. I, I understand that. That makes sense. But with DeFi, because we're going into an area of legitimacy where we have interest rates, lending, in other words, we're getting rid of the banks. Don't give the government an excuse to step in and regulate it because we're using the P word. Now, if somebody like JP Morgan comes in and says, hey, you can do DeFi through us and it won't be publicly available. That's a different story. <clears throat> that's different. But to just say, hey, you know, I'm going <laughs> I'm to create some platform and, you know, <laughs> You can use it too, along with the criminals. No, that doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. not gonna. That is not what we want in DeFi. Yeah, and I think that's definitely the biggest challenge with DeFi. I mean, because as more assets get locked up on DeFi, I mean, pretty much it's just a ticking clock of when regulators will come knocking. Because we've seen it happen before with Ether Delta. Uh, I mean, now I mean maybe they'll claim to, that everything is decentralized, but. I think once they see how much money is flowing through DeFi with no KYC or AML, and as as you mentioned, uh, once privacy gets gets mixed in there, and once once people know that hey, I mean criminals can come in, 
lend on Compound or borrow money or margin trade on DYDX, make a killing or borrow flash loans and make a killing with no KYC, no AML, with privacy, I think, uh, I mean, because at, at the end of the day, the so companies and people who are building these protocols and they're public. So, I mean, so there's always somebody to call, right? If you're, if you're trying to kind of, I guess, tame, tame this, this wild beast. But yeah, I mean, I, I think it's definitely an interesting time for DeFi. Um, we're obviously very bullish on it, but it is something they will have to address in terms of how they can handle compliance. All right. All right, so let's see how we're doing here. Let's check in with our audience in the comments down below. Hey, Ravi, welcome. Hey, Tan on Twitter. He's saying, uh, many companies offer DeFi with interest, but they do not offer any lending. Is it a DeFi Ponzi? Uh, I'm not quite sure I understand the question, um, but I mean, I would only leverage protocols or platforms that have been widely tested and that have gone through a vetting process and, and that are pretty well known in the community. I wouldn't rely on random uh, fly-by-night projects that nobody has heard of. So definitely be cautious because DeFi, I mean, it's, it's not perfect. It, there's definitely an element of risk and that's something everybody should factor in with, uh, with DeFi. Okay, so Summer says, hi, Ian. Are you planning to add to token metrics, screening tools to use daily for trading based on some script? Uh, thanks. Um, I mean, so if you go to token metrics, let me pull it up here. I mean, token metrics in a way is already a screening tool. Now we do plan to, to add more stuff to it, um, but let me, let me pull it up here and go to day trader real quick. Okay, so this is token metrics pulled up. We're now looking at the day trader ratings. Um, so as you see here, I mean, actually, just, <laughs> so token metrics in terms of trading is uh, very bullish on Helium as well. But okay, so I mean, as mentioned before in the past, we have our three-point checklist. So the, the three-point checklist, pretty much for those who, who are watching this for the first time, we go through, we we look for a grade that's in the in the top five, I would say. And then we look for TA trend that's also bullish. So if we just come here and just filter based off of that. And then we also go through and look at the price predictions. So for example, if we go to uh, PAX Gold, it's actually, that's pretty interesting. So in a way, the models are, are not bullish at the moment. They're basically saying some kind of pullback is coming. Okay, and this model, looks either it's glitching or yeah, okay, this one might be a glitch. Okay, th this one we'll have to ignore. So this one I would skip. Sometimes that does happen. Uh, this one, I think because we recently added it and there isn't really much uh, pricing data. So I think that's why that is. But here, let's go to Bitcoin. Bitcoin was number two, right? So if we go to price predictions on Bitcoin. So in general, the idea is you want the price prediction trend to be bullish meaning that in 30 days, the price will be higher than where it is. And also the TA to be bullish and also the, the overall grade to, to be in the top five, basically bullish. So if you have all those three, that's really uh, our way of kind of screening for, for traders to find, uh, obviously, not, obviously nothing is perfect, but this we think will filter out most of the noise out there and will have you finding more winning trades than losing money. Now, one thing we do plan to add based on community feedback is adding a column. So most likely we'll likely replace the market cap column here with the price prediction column. So this will basically give you a predicted ROI gain in the next 30 days or so based on our metrics. That's something people have been asking for on, on feedback that tokenmetrics.com. So we do want to work with our community to, to add that because we think right now, every, every Right, right now you have to go through and manually uh, click on each coin to get the price predictions. So I want to make sure everything is is easily available here. All right, but um, I mean, that's pretty much how we would do it. Um, anything else you would add to that, Bill, in terms of finding or screening for, for good trades from your perspective? Well, 
the only thing I would add is that, you know, there's a lot to work with here. Okay. I know like, you know, retail firms, like, you know, I don't know, your Schwab's, your E-Trades, you know, they offer a wide range of tools. And really the only way to learn it is to experiment with it. You've got, you've got to find in the, in the sort of data, data stew, you've got to find what works best for you. Right. So experimenting is the best way to say, okay, this works for me. I, I mean, it'd be great if Ian could invent like push button, do this, but you know, it, it involves some trial and error. Yeah. Now the push button is coming in the future. That's called the Ro Robo Advisor. <laughs> right. Right. So, I mean, there's no set time frame yet. Right now, we're just kind of taking things one step at a time. So we've been building the technology and the the written modeling system. Next up is the, the indices. So we're hoping to launch that. I mean, target was end of the month, but right now it looks like it's probably going to be more next month. Uh, but we, we have been testing everything in house, and the tests are very very positive. Uh, so I think once we launch that next month, that will probably be the the most used part of tokenmetrics. So it's kind of like we're launching a, a, a totally new version of tokenmetrics that'll make everything easier for our customers to decipher all the information and to, to find those winning investments and trades. All right. Um, okay, let me see what other questions we can ask or answer. This question, I think, is about DeFi and lending and borrowing. All right, I want to put my crypto. Uh, I think I'm humans to work or they mean to work. I own one Bitcoin and a few ETH and want to make income from it. Can you tell me what, what, what to do, basically? Should I put my whole bags or is there a risk to lose them? Okay, so pretty much to rephrase that. You have crypto, you have Bitcoin and ETH. You want to put it to work and earn some money on that, some interest on that. Uh, first thing I would say is go to a site I call uh, DeFi Lending. Sorry. Uh, no, sorry. It's DeFi Rate. DeFiRate.com slash lend. So this is a nice site. Uh, they go through and they aggregate different lending, the different interest rates for lending across different platforms, DeFi and CeFi. Right? So platforms like Compound, Aave, DYDX, Fulcrum, Nuo, BlockFi, Coinlist, Bitfinex, Poloniex, Maker, Coinbase, and Crypto.com. So you mentioned you had ETH and Bitcoin. So if you have Bitcoin, uh, if you go to BlockFi, they're paying 6% annually. Uh, Bitfinex is 4.7. Poloniex is 2.9. ETH, uh, so ETH, uh, the best you can get is Bitfinex. So right now, centralized platforms are giving the best. However, you mentioned Bitcoin, right? This is where why I have so many friends of mine trying to get to Bitcoin from Bitcoin and switch it to uh, Ethereum through WBTC, which is wrapped Bitcoin. So WBTC on Compound right now is paying out 18%. Right, so imagine you had your Bitcoin on a Ledger Nano, and you, and you're saying, why am I holding it in Nano when I could be earning 18% a year? I mean, people on Wall Street would, would kill for 18% returns. <laughs> I mean, uh, so definitely look into. I mean, that's why Compound is probably top 20 market cap right now, and that's why there's lots of hype and FOMO, uh, as we mentioned earlier in the show. Right, so this is very very impressive. Um, let me see what it is. Do they have Ren BTC here? Okay, they don't have run BTC or synthetics, uh, but let's 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 go to Compound real quick. Compound .finance. So I pulled up. So if we go to markets, so um, yeah, right now they have one hundred thirty million dollars. Okay, I'm sorry, not sure how I'm supposed to be reading this. Okay, let's go to. Okay, route BTC. Okay, so this shows you shows you the supply. And okay, so here they have 17% annual, uh, so basically yield, right? So 17, almost 18%. So it looks like the other side was rounding up. Um, for ETH, ETH right now shows nothing. 
at Tether 4.6. Yeah, so I would definitely, if you have BTC, look into getting WBTC. Uh, that's definitely something I think worth looking into. Uh, uh, Bill, uh, any comments in, in terms of if somebody has Bitcoin or Ether and they want to start putting it to use and start earning some some interest? Well, first of all, I think the fact that anybody's even asking this question is a huge moment for crypto, right? So just think about it at a conceptual level. Somebody is asking you to go from an extremely safe crypto asset like Bitcoin to WBTC. Okay. It doesn't really matter why they're just asking you to do that. And they're willing to pay you 20% per year to do it. I mean, I, I, I was in like fifth grade at the time, but interest rates were at 20% in the United States in 81 and 82. So a 20% interest rate is not unheard of. So they're paying you to take risk and creating like an interest rate environment. Now, I, I know I've said that probably four times already, but the fact that we're getting questions of like, how do we get in? And then we're answering those questions. And then that's going to sort of like proliferate, like going to see a lending officer, like, you know, in six months, you will walk into a branch of something could be like unchained capital in Austin, or I'd love it if it was a token metrics branch on, uh, you know, London, right? Where you could walk yeah. in and get lending advice because that's what you used to do at, you know, let's call it the B word, right? I don't want to get anybody upset, but that's what, <laughs> that's what the B word used to be for. Now uh, you might get that advice from a crypto group that's going to help you get, you know, if you want to take some risk, that's not trading risk, or you want to take interest rate risk, you're going to get paid for that. Yes, yes. Well, that's definitely spot on. So actually, I've, I'm guessing people have some questions in terms of what WBTC is. So let me kind of quickly pull this up here. So this is coming from WBTC.network. This, I believe, is the official site. So now WBTC technically is not DeFi. So the way it works is you, the customer, you go to, uh, to the merchant. So I think let's say this platform, for example, you go through KYC AML and you give them their Bitcoin. I mean, sorry, you give them your Bitcoin. They take custody of your Bitcoin and they and pretty much lock it up. And then they issue or mint a WBTC Ethereum token. So basically th th what they're doing is they're taking your Bitcoin, taking it off the market, and then they're minting a new Bitcoin. No, sorry, an ERC-20 token that's pegged to the number of of Bitcoins they have locked up, right? Uh, so if we drill deeper into how that's being done here, right? So the merchant here initiates the mint, right? They take the Bitcoin to custody. Uh, they mint the, the WBTC and through the smart contract, and this goes back to you, right? And now, so you, you basically, you, it's kind of like taking your Bitcoin to a bank in a way, right? And they, they basically give you a receipt except this receipt is like ERC-20 token, which you then take to a platform like Compound and earn up, up to 18% annually on that. Now, let's say you're done with that. You want to cash out. How do you do that? You take that same ERC-20 token. You go back to the to the merchant or the custodian. You give them that the, the token. They, they then give you back your Bitcoin and they burn that token. So it's basically following a mint and burn type model. Now, this is this this works very, very great. However, the issue some people have with it is because there's a central party involved. So this is where one of the other projects we covered earlier in the show has been bubbling up. So this is called REN BTC. So REN BTC is basically doing the same exact thing, uh, except with no central party. So let me see if I can pull this up here. So basically everything is completely decentralized, right? So imagine being able to uh, to to send your Bitcoin to some kind of uh, smart contract or whatever. Uh, so sorry, not not smart contract, but some kind of other wallet on Bitcoin. They have them issue you RAN BTC, do, doing the same exact thing as WBTC, except with no middle point. 
Uh, let me see if I can find that example here on the site. Apologies, I'm doing this here on the fly. Uh, is it called RenVM? Um, let me... Okay, anyway, without delving too, too much into it. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, Ren, Ren is also, Ren has been uh, pretty much, I would say, blowing up in the last few months. I've been hearing lots of people in our network talking about it as well. Um, have you had a chance to look into Ren by any chance, Bill? Well, I've been watching the chart. And now that you've explained this to me, like I watched this thing go up and up. It hit resistance. It stopped, but it didn't go down. It didn't like crash. And now this explains why, right? In other words, kind of the pure crypto crowd that may be really interested in DeFi doesn't want their Bitcoin locked up, okay, with some person that they don't know, okay? They may like gravitate to this over time. And, you know, the pure crypto crowd is, is large. So, you know, this does have a lot of potential. Yeah. Okay. So I've just found the, the blog post I was looking for. Uh, thank you, Bill. So it's, yeah, so it's called Ren VM. So here we have basically Bitcoin, the Bitcoin blockchain. So this goes to their VM, which, which stands for virtual machine. So Ren virtual machine. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure how all this works. I've not gone into like the, the, the code per se, but they, they have some secret sauce or whatever. Then they issue a new token on the Ethereum called Ren BTC. So kind of like with WBTC, it's the same thing. And then you can use this on all the different DeFi apps out there. So Compound, this is DYDX, Maker, Fulcrum, Uniswap, uh, all these others. Uh, Kyber Network, uh, definitely worth checking out. Uh, this has also been, okay, yeah, this is, this is explaining this even more. So here we see user sends Bitcoin to a dedicated address generated by a DAP and verified by RenVM. Okay, then the BTC is held in custody by Ren VM's decentralized network of dark nodes. Okay, so it looks like they're running Bitcoin nodes that are decentralized and dark. I have no idea, but definitely look into it. It's called Ren Project on Medium and Ren VM. I mean, uh, so definitely interesting stuff happening in the DeFi space. Uh, going back to the question, how to put your money to, to work in terms of crypto and Bitcoin and Ether. I mean, I think lending, right? So to recap, go to those platforms I just brought up. Um, DeFi.com slash lend was the site I was on. Uh, DeFi.com slash lend. Go through, compare the different platforms. But I mean, looking at everything right now, the best place to lend Bitcoin is not on Bitcoin. And I mean, I wonder how all, all the Bitcoin maximums feel. I mean, because they probably don't like hearing that. Because <laughs> I mean, there might be an exodus from Bitcoin going to either WBTC or RenBTC. And I mean, that would be a, a crazy crypto world we're in if all the Bitcoin holders are actually on Ethereum. Because I mean, that bodes well for Ethereum's future. And that's why I've been very bullish on it. Uh, Bill's also been bullish on Ether as well. Uh, right now it's been going sideways pretty much in the channel. But as we, as we like to say, the bigger the base, the higher into space. Um, with that being said, let us know what you think down in the comments below. All right. Um, so, Bill, um, it's, it's been a, a pretty long stream. Uh, we've gone over over two hours, I believe. Um, any any last words of wisdom before we wrap up the Sunday? Well, happy Father's Day to the dads out there. Um, always remember, folks, every day in June and July that Bitcoin doesn't go down uh, represents hope for higher prices. Okay, and I think we've established actually with some real granularity that you're not going to find anywhere else, you know, what's actually going on in DeFi. So after listening to Ian, you know, we kind of feed off each other, you know, the things that he sees and the things that I see independently, you know, altcoins, right? They're, they're not just speculative junk anymore. Something real is happening. So I'll leave you with that and we'll see you next week. All right. Thank you, Bill. It was a pleasure having you on. Thank you. And be sure to follow Bill on Twitter, crypto underscore noble. Uh, he's, he's posting to you on Twitter as well. Thank you, Bill. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you, everybody. It's been a pleasure. As you guys can see, 
I'm, I'm still here on the moon. Uh, first live stream officially on the moon. <laughs> but uh, now it's time for us to end the show. So thank you, everybody. Be sure to go to tokenmetrics.com to subscribe if you're not there, there yet, especially the professional group. Professional group, you have me and Bill. Bi-weekly calls, one hour, uh, going through TA, answering questions live, just in a small, intimate group setting. We also have, uh, at this point, I would say anywhere between three to four, sometimes even five emails coming out each week. We have two technical analysis emails every week um, through Bill. So, so sometimes not everybody has a chance to watch all the videos. So basically giving you live market updates on altcoins and Bitcoin and Ethereum, technical analysis and charts via the email. We also have in-depth investment reports, uh, all just for our customers via the email, upcoming reports. Actually, maybe I can even share some of the upcoming reports we have here because we have so many things we've been working on. We, we have upcoming reports on, on Compound. Let me, let me just make sure. Okay, just give me one second. I'm gonna show you all the different things we are working on. I mean, <laughs> I did, so this, this is why it, uh, it, uh, it pays to have good research. Okay, so some of the things we're working on now. So as you see here, right? We have compound, dragon chain. We have some other stuff here in the works. We have to publish it, right? We have AI, Nervos, Orchid, Numerai, UMA, Unibright, OneChain, Ethereum 2.0, Litecoin, Theta. I know somebody was asking about that. Ava Labs, Ripple Investment Report for the Ripple people out there. Origin, Celsius, Cody, Bitcoin Investment Report, Ren, Bistox, uh, Newsletter, WazirX, Keep Network, New Cypher, Filecoin, Arweave, Scale, Render, Livefear, Bancor, Aragon, Thunder Token, Store Labs, Secret Network, Unification, LCX, Dapps, Streamer. So, I mean, our research team is putting in work uh, to make sure our customers have the best research out there. So, def thank you to all the customers who are watching the stream. Uh, if you're not yet, a, if you're not a customer yet, highly encourage you to do it before the free trial is gone. Because um, we, as mentioned before, we, we are planning to migrate over uh, to a discounted uh, paid trial, kind of like Bloomberg model, where you basically have a chance to try everything out, but uh, at a discount. Uh, there's no timeline yet, but it's sometime in the coming months. So I definitely recommend if you haven't yet had a chance to try it out, to go to tokenmetrics.com, use the coupon code CryptoFamily, capital, capital letters, all one word, to get 10% off of token metrics. All right, with that being said, uh, thank you all. It was a pleasure. The moon is not the limit to the moon and beyond. Thank you.